أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد أحبتي في الله we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى and praise him and also we ask him to open his blessing and mercy on our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and his companions and those who follow their footsteps until the judgment day. Thereafter, I would like to greet each and every one of you with the perfect greeting of Islam, which is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We welcome you all in this great event with the title Plant the Quran in Your Heart. And also, we would like to apologize to the Kamara Kundankas, those who haven't ate and they start complaining. It was our plan to provide food for you, but we have to spend more than 300 and something thousand Gambian dollars in this event. To add their food again is gonna cost us almost 200,000 plus again, which is half million. But inshallah, every year, plan in the Quran is here to stay and also to grow. Maybe next year, each of the Kamara Kundankas will have two plates and two bottles of water, inshallah. Jazakumullahu khairan. Ahibbati fillah. We're gonna start it with this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a task to each and every one from the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This ummah is known as ummah iqra, the ummah of reading, the ummah of researching, the ummah of, you know, conveying the message which was given to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there is another name for this ummah, which is ummah to da'wah, to convey the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no age restriction. There is no qualification. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this task to each and every one. Balligu anni walau ayah. This is the statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Convey about me even if that is going to be a verse. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was praising the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and telling them that you are the best of the ummahs. Why? Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are the best of the nations for two reasons. تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر because you always advise one another to do what you did and also you avoid one another from practicing sinful actions and this is your duty this is my duty and this is the duty of each and every one here تأمرون فعل مضارع it's not about فعل ماضي or فعل أمر this is something that has to be done every day. Once we stop this, we're not going to be count as the best of the nation. It has to be something that should continue. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna anil munka. From there, ahibbati fillah. Now let's enter in the topic, which is mawadda and rahma in Islam. I can't pronounce this beautiful statement without smiling. And I expect the same thing from you people. MashaAllah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, At-tabassumu ila akhika sadaqa. Just smiling at your brother's face is an act of charity. So always smile as much as you can. From the ahibbati fillah, I will start it with infaq. Tahadu tahabu. This is the hadith of Rasulullah. Give gifts, and if you do that, you will love one another. You don't have to give 5,000 to someone. You don't have to give 10,000. Of course, if you have it, you can do it. But you shouldn't say, I have to wait until I have that amount. Even one dollar, give it to your brother as a gift. And the result will be, you will love one another. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us in the hadith. It's very important for us to discuss about this topic affection and mercy in Islam. Even though the book was titled Affection and Mercy in Marriage. But now we want to generalize everything so that each and every one will be included. 
I used to tell the bachelors that this book is not for you. One of my friends, he's not married. He asked me that, can I also buy the book? I said to him, Ya Akhi, if you want to buy the book, then you have to have the mahar with you. Because I'm sure the following day, you're going to your parents that I'm marrying today. <laughs> so if you don't have the mahar, don't touch it. Okay? MashaAllah. We can continue from there. In fact, it's very important to spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why the prophet says, Tahadu, Tahabu. Give gifts, and if you do that, you're going to love one another. Could you imagine a country of 96% of Muslims? Only two people decided to cover or to sponsor 75% of this event. In the UK, subhanallah, I wish you are there in Ramadan. When they start making fundraising, each and every one will give out what they have. Even the drug dealers. And my mom, sometimes she will make this joke. Why will not Allah put barakah in their drug dealing? Because they're giving charity from it. I'm not saying it's halal. But still, they're giving charity from it. And you shouldn't say, I have to wait until I'm, if I'm rich. I was so disappointed. Only two people decided to cover 75% of the event. And you know what? These people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will keep on blessing them. Who is going to owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spending in his path? فَيُضَعِفَهُ لَهُ أَضْعَافًا كَثِيرًا And when he is paying you back, he is going to multiply it for you. My, bro my beloved brothers and sisters, we all want to be rich. And I always say this to brothers and sisters. It's very simple. Just give charity. Do you know why? There are creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will pray for you. In the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, every day two angels will descend and they will make different du'as. The other one will say, Allahumma a'ti munfiqan talafa o khalafa. Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafa. O Allah, give more to someone who spent in your path today. And the other angel will say, Allahumma a'ti munsikan talafa. Oh Allah, give disruption to someone who has the money, but still he doesn't want to spend it in your path. Do you think people who support this event, all the donors, not only those couple, there are other people outside there again, we thank each and every single one of them. Do you think they will do this and still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test them with poverty? And the angels, their dua is always guaranteed. Your dua may be rejected. My dua may be rejected because of what? Because of our sin. But for the angels, La ya'asoon Allah ma amarahum. They never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever thing He commanded them to do. Wa yaf'aloon ma yu'maroon. And they only do the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them to do. For dua to be rejected, is because of our sins. So now from today, develop this system in your life. Every day, I will give charity to have the dua of that angel who will say, Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafa. Oh Allah, give more to someone who spent in your path today. You don't have to give thousands. The Islamic religion is so easy. If you have it, no problem. But if you are poor, even one delicacy, with this intention of having the dua of that angel, and insha'Allah, you will have it. Ahibbati fillah, we have a lot to discuss, but because of the time, we're going to summarize it as much as we can. There is one hadith of Rasulullah. He says, Al-yadul uliya khayrun min al sufla. The hand, which is always up, or the upper hand is always better than the lower one. 
Which hand is the you know upper one? The upper hand is the hand which is always giving charity. And the lower hand is the one which is always asking for al fudi <laughs> We've made here a ticket. And as you all know, behind this event, there are projects. Among them, building an international school. Among them, feeding the poor people. Among them, feeding the orphans. We don't ask you much. But just one thousand dollars, everyone starts saying, "Hey, Dawalu." <laughs> Once we make it free, after listening to the advice of the Mashaikh, Allahumma barik, the calls, everyone's phone was busy. The executive members were even exhausted. I said to myself, Subhanallah, this is not a good sign. We should try and develop the life system of Abu Bakr Siddiq and Umar bin Khattab when it comes to when it comes to infaq. There was a time the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked them to bring charity. Umar bin Khattab, he always wants to, you know, compete with Abu Bakr Siddiq. And wafi dalik, faliyatanafasil mutanafisun. Things like this, we should compete one another. He brought half of his wealth. And gave it to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam thinking that he is going to defeat Abu Bakr Siddiq without knowing that person is giving the title Id Huma Fil Ghar Id Yaqulu Li Sahibihi La Tahzan Inna Allah Ma'ahu This is Abu Bakr Siddiq When Abu Bakr Siddiq is giving the charity he brought everything to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Then the messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala questioned him do you leave anything for your family? He said, I left there Allah and his messenger. Allahu Akbar. Where are men like Abu Bakr Siddiq? Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, you know, uh, test that person with poverty? Never. Even if you become broke, Allah will give you the heart that will make you to cope with that situation. When we say to be rich, it's not about wealth all the time, but the richness in your heart. There are people having millions, but to give out 100 is so difficult. There are people, they don't have nothing, like the Sahabas, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was describing them. They will give it to their brothers even if they themselves are in need of it. And Sheikh Sisao, MashaAllah, Hafizahullah, one of my Sheikh, and I've made one post about him. Because of him, I completed my high school. Before, I used to attend only Wednesday. Saturday was never part of my calendar. I hate school. But because of the Sheikh, Allahumma barik, he advised me. I know you want to travel, but without this knowledge, you are nothing. And with this knowledge, you will, we will always be, you know, respected by each and everyone, which is happening today by the help of Allah. Not because I'm rich, not because I'm the famous guy, but because of Kitabullah wa Sunnah Rasulih sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa nassalullah an yajalana min ahli Sunnah wa min man yatabiyuna hada al Kitab al ladhi unzila ala nabiyina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ahibati fillah. Now let's move on to mawadda and rahmah among ourselves. Affection and mercy among ourselves. This is lacking, especially among the tulabu sharia. I am so disappointed. This is the fact. We used to be the people who will promote love and affection and, uh, among ourselves. I once told my dad this. There are some tulabu ilm. They will attend gatherings just to pick mistakes. He was so disappointed. This is happening in the Gambia. I say, unfortunately, this is what is happening. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to tell his companions, look, never inform me bad thing about any of my companions because I want to leave this, you know, world wa ana salimu sadr without having any enmity towards my companion. And the same thing I implement. Whoever message me, messenger, that person is this and that, I never speak with them. 
And if you are a person like that, you must have enemies. No one will be stick to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam except descriptions will be given to you. Just like the descriptions that were given to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Among them, Sahirun, he is a magician. Kadhab, he is a liar. Asatirul awwaleen. These are the statements from our forefathers. They gave these statements of Rasulullah. Why well, keep on repeating? You have to be matured. To be matured has nothing to do with your age. Maturity is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A da'i should do respond to each and everything. Ignore them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the solution. Whenever they say something that hurts you, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدَوْكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know that the statements, the allegations, they are trying to put on you, they are affecting you. But the solution is, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ Always make tasbih. And the second thing is, pray to Allah. Finish. And you will forget about everything. Love is very important among ourselves. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions this in one hadith. You will not become a believer until you love one another. Imanuk la yakmul illa bil mahabba. Your iman will not be perfected except if you start loving one another. And the Prophet then says, أَوَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمْ تَحَابَبْتُمْ Should I not inform you something that if you do, you will start loving one another? أَفْشُ السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ Constantly make salam among our, among, I mean, among yourself. السَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُمْ And I would like each and everyone to implement this right now. The person sitting next to you, make salam to them. So that the mahabba will do. MashaAllah. Jazakumullah khairah. Ahibbati fillah. Now let's move on to the third point of the discussion. To be kind to the non-Muslims. Today some of us think, they think that insulting them is part of the religion. There are many Sahabas out there, they accepted the religion not because of the da'wah of Rasulullah, but because of his actions. Now, are you that type of Muslim, whom if a non-Muslim start looking at him, he will see good character. The Sheikh was discussing about that. Good character is very important as a Muslim, as a talibul ilm. Sometimes you shouldn't discuss about other things. I, I, I always mention the story of Abdullah ibn Umar. He's, oh, who is also known as Faqihu Hadihi al-Ummah. Radiyallahu anhu. He said that I was once sitting with the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abu Bakr Siddiq was there. Umar ibn Khattab was there. Uthman ibn Affan also was present. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked a question. I know the answer, but I never give the answer. Because why? Kibarul ulama, they are sitting there. I think they deserve more to speak at that moment, not me. He decided to keep silent. Then after some time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave them the answer. He said, Wallahi, I was about to say the same thing. Then Umar ibn Khattab said to him, why not you mention it? Had it been you mentioned this, it will be more beloved to me than so and so. He said, because I saw you and Abu Bakr Siddiq and Uthman, none of you are saying anything, then I decided to be silent. This is what we call good character. This should be the character of a da'i. You shouldn't be speaking about each and every mas'ala. Leave it for the mashayikh. Leave it for the, you know, tulab uh, al-ilm, who are more knowledgeable than you. But today, it's so sad. How can we invite the non-Muslims in our religion when they are see, seeing us fighting one another? Whoever has one rank, you start hating the person. 
and I will direct this verse to you. أَمْ يَحْسُدُونَ النَّاسَ عَلَى مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Question mark. I'll leave the answer to you. Will they envy people because of the bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them? لا تحاسدوا Do not, you know, envy one another. But there is a shalus and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whoever sees something in his brother, which he likes. What should you do? فَلْيَدْعُ لَهُ بِالْبَرَكَةِ هَذَا هُوَ دِينُنَا You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put barakah in the thing that cousin is having. But not, you know, planning negative things towards them or backbiting them. This is never the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And for our dawah to go for what? If we want all the non-Muslims in this country to accept the Islamic religion, that's so easy. 96% Muslim. But it's very rare we make someone to accept the Islamic religion. Because of what? Inna Allah. La yughayyiru ma bi qawmi. Hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never make any changes in you. Except if you are changed. Let's avoid that enmity. Let's avoid that hatred. Welcome them. Pray for them. Any mistake they do, rectify them. The brother who pre presented here, Al Hassan, Allahumma Barik, I'm not good at Nahu. I hate that. Every Nahu teacher, I hate you. Nahu is my problem. So if I write anything in Arabic and I post it, if there is a mistake, he will text me. I mean, he will text me, Sheikh, there is, you know, Khata Huna, Khata Huna Nahuiya, or Usahihu Al Akhta. This is what we call humanity. Abu Bakr Siddiq did the same thing when he became a Khalifa. If I say something which mad with the Sunnah of Rasulullah and the Quran, follow me. Wa in akhtatu, fasadiduni. If I make any mistake, rectify me. But there is a way of rectifying people, not in their comment sections, ya akhi. I never reply to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. We have to be kind to the non Muslims. Let's go back to the topic. Because of what Allah says in the Quran. لَا يَنْهَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ لَمْ يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَلَمْ يُخْرِجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ أَنْ تَبَرُّوهُمْ وَتُقْسِطُوا إِلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ Allah is saying, Allah is not stopping you to be kind to people who never take you out from your houses and they never fight you for you to be just with them. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves people who are just. So these are the non-Muslims. Don't fight them. You can treat them well. And in fact, there was this ulam, Yahudi, a boy who was a Jewish, he accepted the Islamic religion because of the good character of Rasulullah. This boy used to work for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after some time, Prophet Muhammad missed him so much. And he decided to search for the young boy. And he found that the young boy was ill. In fact, he was on his dead death. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam decided to go there. He said to him, Aslim, oh young boy, accept the Islamic religion. Masha Allah. Then the boy then look at his dad to see whether the father will be supporting or will support the idea or not. Then the father said to him, Ati' Abu Qasim. Follow Abu Qasim. He decided to accept the Islamic religion because of the good character of Rasulullah and because of the single phrase Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. Asli, just that. No need to stand there for one hour, two hours. No. Before giving da'wah, you have to give it through your actions. Let them see it in you. Let them see that Islam is full of mawadda and rahmah, affection and mercy. Don't be the reason for them to hate our this beautiful religion. The Islamic religion promote peace, unity, love, affection among the Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the people who will understand good and follow it. In Surah Insan, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was describing the good people, one of their description is that they are always kind to the non-Muslims. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا Who are the Asils? The non-Muslims. They always give food or they feed the orphans and the poor people and the captive for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From today, treat them with kindness. Treat them with love. Show them that the Islamic religion is the right religion. Is the religion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is the religion of submitting yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And never this religion is the religion of creating fitna. I always say this. Islam and Muslims are two different things. Islam and Muslims they are two different things. You can find the definition of Islam in, you know, a high number of Muslims. But not all of them have the true definition of Islam in them. What is Islam? To submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For things he commanded you to do, you do all those things. And things he stop you from doing, you avoid all those things. Not only that, among the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to do is to be kind to the non-Muslims. Inna Allah katabal ihsan ala kulli shaykh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed kindness upon each and every creation. Being an, be an, I mean, be an animal or a Christian, a non-Muslim, each and every one, they deserve that, you know, that kindness and that, you know, respect. You shouldn't treat them anyhow you want. May Allah grant us the understanding. Ahibati fillah. We can't mention all the points. But let's conclude it with this. My beautiful wife is behind there listening to me. Masha Allah. Can I see you smiling? Allahumma bari. Now let's speak about mawadda and rahmah. First of all, if you want to marry, when brothers ask me, the only answer I give them, question yourself, why am I married? That's very important. If you want to enjoy your marriage, you first need to know why you are married. They always say this proverb. That's one of the facts. You have to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ikhlas if you want successful marriage. Not because my friend, you know, is married. My sister is married. Everyone is married. Let me just also do it like that. It's not going to be possible. This is why today we have too many divorces. We look on their appearance, not the akhlaq. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَذْهَرْ بِذَاتِ الْتِينَ Choose the one who has the religion. And in this book, we have spoke about how to choose a spouse. And each and every bachelor here, I want you to read this first before making the mistake. One of the mistakes that people do is the appearance. And the Sheikh mentioned that here, Mufti Yaks, Allah Yahtaduhu. When they see your appearance, wow, I want to be like you. It's like today people don't follow the message, but the appearance. If you drink, I mean, dress like Mufti, uh, Mufti Men, MashaAllah, he's a alim. When, he, when we have great ulamas here, that's like Sheikh Sisaw, he will say, look, I don't bother. If you dress like him and come here, convey the message, they will turn you as a jahil. When that person might be even more knowledgeable than Mufti, Mufti Men. I'm sure you all know Sheikh Sisaw, right? Whenever you speak about Nahu in this country, they point at him. Fiqh also, MashaAllah, Allahumma barik. So we have to value our ulamas. And I've received this comment as well from a lot of people saying that we have humiliated our ulamas. 
without knowing that I never take any step. I mean, I never take any step without consulting the mashayikh. Among them is Sheikh Sisa. When I was given the position of being, being an imam in the UK, I never applied for it. They came for me through my dad. And I said to them, look, give me some time to think about it. I messaged the sheikh. This is what is happening. And they want me to be the imam in that masjid. Do you think I am entitled to be imam in that masjid? The sheikh said to me, Tastahiqu ma fawka dhalik. Even though I know that we are not entitled for that, he said, you are entitled for something which is greater than that. Because he always motivates the students. I am sure that we are not entitled for such. But just to let you know that a wise person will never take any step regarding issues in the deen without consulting his mashayikh. So calm down. Ahibati fillah. I know babe is looking at me. Don't worry. I will fulfill my promise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was talking about marriage MashaAllah he mentions two important things. He mentions two important things. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among his miracle is that he provided spouses for you so that you might find peace with them. And he made two main things between each and every couple. If your marriage is a successful one. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً And he made a place between you affection and mercy. Allahu Akbar. Now question yourself. Is that affection is in your marriage? Is that you know mercy in your marriage? That's very important. If the affection is not there, go and find the affection and bring it back. If the mercy is not there, the same thing. Go and bring the mercy and bring it back. Because if not, the marriage won't last long. Na'udhu billahi min hadha. Aisha radiyallahu anha. She said this in one hadith. Even if I'm fasting, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will kiss me. Do you kiss your wives? That's very important. This is one of the sunnah of Rasulullah. But today most of us might think that this is with the Western ideology. No, those people are not stupid. They're taking everything from our sunnah because we're not practicing it anymore. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kissing Aisha radiallahu anha. There is a reason behind it. So that the relationship between you and your spouse can be strong. And Aisha radiallahu anha the beautiful connection between him, I mean between her and Rasulullah went to the extent that even if she is not pleased with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet will know. He once said to Aisha when they were having this beautiful conversation, whenever you are pleased with me, I know. Whenever you are also displeased with me, I know. Then Rasulullah, I mean Aisha radiallahu anha, questioned Rasulullah, how? How do you know? She then replied back by saying, whenever you are pleased with me, you say, Wa Rabbi Muhammad, by the Lord of Muhammad. He always mentioned, I mean she always mentioned her husband's name. But if they are having issues, this is telling you that sometimes there are mostly problems in your marriage. If the marriage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was problems, you and I, are we able to, you know, pro, I mean, uh, uh, stop the problem from entering in our marriages? Impossible. Then she said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I mean, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, if you are pleased with me, you will say, wa rabbi Muhammad, by the Lord of Muhammad. But if you are displeased with me, you will say, wa rabbi Ibrahim. By the Lord of Ibrahim, you won't mention my name. 
when we were writing this hadith, I and my beautiful wife, I then said to her, now let's try and implement the same thing. We can't just write the message and give it to people. We have to try and adopt this system in our life. I ask her the same question. How do you know if I'm happy? Masha Allah. She said to me, whenever you are happy or pleased with me, you will start calling me Tim Tim. <laughs> Masha Allah. Okay? But if you are, let's listen to the, to the full story. And she said to me, if you are displeased with me, you will call me Fatima. <laughs> then I ask her the same question. Or she asked me the same question. For you, how comes? Or how do you react when you are happy or you are displeased? How do you know? I said to her, if you are happy with me, you will start calling me Habibi. But if you are displeased, my real name, could you imagine? Tafa. <laughs> Masha Allah. This is the beauty of Islam. We have to try and have these jokes with them. Make them laugh. It's among the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I am sure by now, all the bachelors, even the married people, are ready to grab a copy from Mawadja and Rahma. Jazakumullahu khaira. Aqulu hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa risa'ili muslimin. Fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa